On February the 20th, 1947, a captured V-2 rocket roared off the launch pad at White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico, and streaked off into the sky. Within three minutes, it reached an apogee of 109.4 kilometers, just above the 100-kilometer Kármán line that defines the boundary of outer space. Though completely forgotten today, this launch was a historic one, for the rocket carried passengers, a group of ordinary fruit flies who became the first complex organisms to travel into space and be successfully recovered. Over the next two decades, they would be followed by hundreds of other animals animals, from mice to rats and guinea pigs to turtles, frogs, and beetles, who bravely paved the way for the first human astronauts. The American space program preferred to use primates like rhesus monkeys and chimpanzees, while the Soviets preferred dogs, all of which were considered even-tempered, cooperative, and easy to train. Seemingly missing from this menagerie of early spacefarers are cats, which are notoriously none of these things. Yet in 1963, the French space program, apparently unaware of the expression light herding cats, launched a cat named Felicet into the wild blue yonder. This is the forgotten story of history's first and thus far only Catstronaut. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, if you're like me, juggling a million ideas for projects and businesses, you need a solid online presence, and that's where Squarespace comes in. It's the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or growing your brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time all in one place. Let me tell you why I love Squarespace. First up, they're blueprint AI and SEO tools. You start with a guided design system that helps you build a personalized website from scratch. Plus, the integrated SEO tools ensure that you get discovered fast. And then there's Fluid Engine. This next-gen website editor is fantastic. With its reimagined drag-and-drop technology, you can customize every design detail on both desktop and mobile. And for all you business owners out there, the flexible payments feature is a lifesaver. It makes checkout seamless by accepting credit cards, PayPal, Apple Pay, and even Afterpay and Clearpay in eligible countries. Your customers will love the convenience. So if you're ready to take your online presence to the next level, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash brainfood to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code brainfood. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring, and now back to today's video. Just like its British, American, and Soviet counterparts, the early French space program benefited greatly from German rocket engineers and research captured at the end of the Second World War. In 1946, 30 German engineers employed by the French Center for the Study of Self-Propelled Missiles began development of a Super V-2 ballistic missile based on wartime designs, which would be capable of lofting a 1,000-kilogram payload over a range of 3,600 kilometers. However, the design was plagued with technical difficulties, and the French government was reluctant to fund the project, so in 1949, SEPA cancelled the Super V-2 and pivoted to the development of a simpler and cheaper sounding rocket, one-tenth of the size for use in scientific research. Dubbed Veronique, a portmanteau of the Vernon, the town where the rocket was developed, and Electronique, the rocket measured six meters tall, weighed a thousand kilograms, and was fueled by a combination of kerosene and nitric acid. Uniquely among sounding rockets, Veronique was wire-guided for the first 55 meters of its flight using thin guidance wires, trailing out from fold-out fins. This eliminated the need for the tall launch towers used by most other sounding rockets, keeping the rocket stable until it had reached a high enough airspeed for its fixed guidance fins to take over. The first Veronique flight took place on August 2, 1950, from Soups in northeastern France. Test flights would continue at various sites in mainland France until May 1952, when the Inter-Army Special Vehicles Test Center opened in the Sahara Desert near Hamagir in French Algeria. These early tests were disappointing. The unexpectedly low thrust of the rocket, giving it a scientifically useless apogee of 65 kilometers. However, in 1957, a lighter version with an apogee of 135 kilometers was developed, dubbed the Voronik AGI, short for Annie Geophysique Internationale or International Geophysical Year. The IGY was an international project lasting from 1957 to 1958, in which teams from around the world cooperated to conduct research on the Earth and its environment. It was this project which prompted the Soviet Union to launch Sputnik 1, the world's first artificial satellite, on October 4, 1957, kicking off the space race. And for more on this wild and wacky period in spaceflight history, please check out our previous video, Kaputnik, America's largely forgotten disastrous first attempt to launch a satellite. By the early 1960s, the United States and Soviet Union were firm 
firmly locked in a race to launch the first man into space, and other nations, while lacking the resources and expertise to do the same, were eager to contribute to the burgeoning space race. One of the major answer questions during this early period was what effect the alien and hostile environment of outer space would have on the human body, with many physiologists fearing that microgravity would prevent astronauts from swallowing or properly digesting food and drink, or so thoroughly scramble their inner ears that they would be completely incapacitated by vertigo and nausea. Such fears had to be thoroughly addressed before the first human astronaut set foot in a spacecraft. In 1961, French President Charles de Gaulle signed into existence the Centre National d'Etudes Spéciales, or CNES, officially launching the French space program. That same year, the Centre de Cinémont et de Recherche de Médecine Aéronautique, in cooperation with CNES, launched a program to study the physiological effects of spaceflight on living organisms. For this research, CERMAT scientists chose animals whose physiology and neurology were already well known, starting with rats. A batch of six laboratory-bred rats were selected for testing, the animals having electrodes implanted in three regions of their brains in order to monitor their neurological response. Over a period of 30 weeks, the six rat astronauts were run through a battery of rigorous stress tests, including spells in isolation chambers and centrifuges. One by one, the subjects were eliminated until only one remained. A one-year-old white male rat dubbed Hector. On February the 22nd, 19th 1961, Hector was launched from the Hamogir facility aboard a Veronique AGI rocket, reaching an apogee of 110 kilometers before safely re-entering the atmosphere and parachuting to Earth. Throughout the flight, he remained alert and calm, a result which boded well for future human spacefarers. This feat made France the third nation to successfully launch an animal into space and recover it alive. Following two more successful rat flights on October the 15th and 18th, 1961, Surma moved on to a larger animal for which they also had extensive neurological data the common house cat. In 1963, the scientists purchased a batch of 14 cats from a Paris pet dealer, all female, as these were believed to have a calmer demeanor. All were giving numbers instead of names to prevent the scientists from becoming emotionally attached. Like the rats before them, these prospective cat astronauts said monitoring electrodes implanted in their skulls and over the course of two weeks were steadily acclimatized to all the stresses they would encounter during their brief suborbital flights, including being strapped into a tiny, claustrophobic cat chamber, being bombarded with recording of rocket engine noises and being spun in a centrifuge at accelerations up to 7 Gs. And to learn about another truly bizarre experiment conducted on our feline friends, please do check out our previous video, The Curious Case of the Cat That Was Turned Into a Living Telephone for Science. On October the 8th, 1963, six cats were selected from the initial batch of 14 and transported to the launch site in Algeria. Then, on October the 17th, cat C341, the calmest of the bunch, was selected for launch. A tuxedo cat weighing 2.5 kilograms, C341 had been astray on the streets of Paris just weeks before being picked up and sold to Surma. In addition to her brain electrode, C341 was fitted with an electrocardiogram or EKG electrodes on her hind legs to monitor her heart rate, a microphone on her chest to monitor her breathing, and two more electrodes on her forelegs that would deliver mild electric shocks. This allowed scientists to monitor her brain's reaction to said shocks and determine if her neurological responses were within normal bounds. Finally, on October the 18th, 1963, C-341 was loaded into the nose cone of Veronique rocket number 47 and at 8.09 a.m. local time, blasted off from the Algerian desert. The suborbital flight reached an apogee of 152 kilometers and lasted a total of 13 minutes, during which C-341 experienced a peak acceleration of 9.6 Gs and five minutes of weightlessness. Nonetheless, telemetry from her various biomonitors indicated that she remained perfectly calm throughout, exhibiting only minor changes to her heart and breathing rate. At Apogee, the nose cone containing the world's first astro cat detached, re entering the atmosphere and parachuted back to the desert floor, where it and its feline passenger were soon recovered by helicopter. Upon the French government's announcement of the successful flight, the public immediately dubbed the hitherto nameless C-341 Felix after the popular cartoon character. However, when it was revealed that C-341 was actually female, this was changed to the female form, fell set, and officially adopted by Surma. Six days later, on October the 24th, the French attempted to launch another cat into space, but a malfunction caused the rocket to careen off course and crash into the desert floor, taking its unnamed feline payload with it. And if all of you animal lovers out there have found this story upsetting, so far, then you might want to turn off now, because it does not have a happy ending. For despite putting her life on the line for science and completing her mission with flying colors, two months after her pioneering flight, Felicet was euthanized so that scientists could dissect her brain. 
Tragically, they discovered nothing of scientific value. All but one of Felicet's training cohort also met this fate. The health of the remaining cat began to deteriorate shortly after receiving her brain electrodes, so the electrodes were removed and the cat adopted as the Surma scientist's mascot. They named her Scubido, after the Scubido braided collar that she wore around her neck. It's worth noting by the time of Felicet's flight, nine humans had already successfully flown into space, making the scientific value of the mission somewhat dubious. From this early start, the French space program grew by leaps and bounds. On November 26, 1965, CNES performed the first successful launch of the Diamond Rocket, the first expendable launch system to be designed and built entirely within France and indeed within Western Europe. The rocket carried Asterix, the first French satellite, into orbit, making France the sixth nation after the Soviet Union, United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, and Italy. And only the third to do so using its own indigenously developed rocket. France later spearheaded the founding of the European Space Agency and developed the Ariane series of rockets, which have successfully launched over 250 payloads since 1979. However, amid these successes, Felicet has been largely forgotten, overshadowed by more famous astro animals such as Lyca the dog and Ham the chimpanzee. And while several countries like former French colonies Chad and Niger issued commemorative stamps in her honor, few of these depictions resembled the actual cat, with many even misnaming her Felix. This began to change in 2017 when Matthew Serge Guy, a creative director at the anomaly London advertising agency, accidentally stumbled upon Felicet's story. Quoting him, Around six months ago, whilst at work, I came across a tea towel in the staff kitchen commemorating the 50th anniversary of the cat who went to space. There was no name for the cat on the towel, nor did it resemble Felicet. After googling it, I became fascinated with Felicet's story, how it had been forgotten over the years and misattributed. It felt like something big should be done to right these wrongs. That same year, Guy launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund a bronze statue to commemorate Felicet. By April 2018, the campaign had met its £40,000 funding target and sculptor Gil Parker was commissioned to create the statue. On December the 18th, 2019, the finished piece depicting Felicet standing atop a globe and staring up at the stars was unveiled on the grounds of the International Space University near Strasbourg in eastern France. Of the memorial, Matthew Guy later wrote, It's important to note that Felicet, alongside many other animals that have braved travel in the name of science, was ultimately an unwilling participant in this experiment. For this mission alone, she, alongside 13 other cats, experienced arduous training prior to the mission and eventually gave her life. And while since 1963 dozens of different animals have flown into space including fish, newts, shrimp, worms, jellyfish and even spiders, Felicet remains the one and only cat to travel to the final frontier, perhaps proving the adage that the French copy no one and no one copies the French.